everybody. Today we are discussing the OA Season 2. This is going to be a spoiler review um, that we are following up our Season 1 review with. So, when we ended Season 1, we were left with several questions that were unanswered. And the main question being whether or not Prairie's story about this alternate reality was real. And that we definitely get the answer to in this season. In fact, the entire season is mostly about the hopping between different dimensions and realities and seeing where Prairie ends up after she is shot. It's basically the season one is asking all the questions. Season two <laughs> is answering all the questions. And then also season two decides to bring up a lot more questions so that we will stay tuned for season three. Yeah, so season two was basically answering a lot of the questions of season one. Season one was just like really structured really well, I thought, and it built up a lot of mystery. And there was that dynamic of is she telling the truth about her story? Is she having like some kind of delusion? Um, this season says, no, that's it was all true. And we're just going to freaking go for it, man. <laughs> and so... Um, yeah, it, this season really kind of goes out there. I mean, it takes like the somewhat outlandish things of like the movements and the, the visions after dying and coming back and it just like, Oh, you know, we'll, we'll take that and amplify it to like five times. And there's all kinds of just weird stuff happening in this. And, uh, and I'm sure there's like a lot of meeting, uh, meaning behind the stuff, a lot of, uh, I don't know if metaphysical is the right word, but there's a lot of um, symbolic stuff at least happening. And to me, um, in terms of the plot of this season, I felt like it was structured not quite as well as season one. I mean, season one had that extra layer of the mystery of, you know, she's telling the story. So it was structured that way. And we're introduced to the main characters uh, Steve, you know, the, the, the other students, um, the teacher, whatever her name Betty. is, uh, Betty, yeah, BBA. And, um, so that, that was a really awesome, like group dynamic here. Now in this season, it does have that group dynamic, but then it splits off. It splits its focus into a lot of different, like sub, uh, plots, I guess, subplots, and I feel like uh, that just makes it so that it nat naturally, it just makes it not meld as well. What do you think? Well, I really enjoyed the plot of this season a lot. Um, and I like, so I'm very much into the sci-fi aspect of it. And that was a lot, like you said, amplified, completely doubled down on the sci-fi portion of it and the fantastical parts of it which I actually didn't like as much when they got too fantastical with things. But for the most part, I actually really liked the plot, but it is a completely different type of vibe than season one. So if you really yeah, like season kinda, one, yeah. season two is like completely different, but I still really liked it. I liked that they answered all my questions because I felt like they were just going to leave them like unanswered because that some of the questions from season one seemed like thrown in there. But no, they went and they answered and they, they did bring up more questions, but they it's making sense. Everything is making sense to me. And I liked I really loved the ending of this season and how they like made everything the whole time you're watching season two you're like none of this makes sense everything's confusing <laughs> i don't know what's going on and then the final episode everything kind of came together yeah it just kind of converges and i thought it was really cool what they did with the ending for the most part yeah and i'm, I'm glad you brought up that's kind of what i was trying to get at was that it's like a completely different thing from season one um, you have a lot of subplots going on, um, and it just felt like season one was a little bit more straightforward with yeah. a little bit of the, you know, flavor the, of the mystery kind of aspects of it, which, which is a different kind of mystery in this one, but they really answered, they put a lot of effort into answering questions. And I felt like 
with a lot of the stuff that they were answering or expositing in this season, it's like last season, I felt like they would have left that to our own imaginations instead of explaining it to us. Like they would introduce some interesting or weird concept in this season. And then like right after they introduce it, they would kind of explain it to us. And I feel like some of those times it would have been a little bit better if they just left that up to us. But I don't know yeah. if it would have been as good if they did that. Well, this <laughs> season was definitely a lot more convoluted, a lot more intricate. And so I think that made it so almost so they had to explain some stuff. Otherwise, definitely, the story doesn't make sense. Um, what did you think of the addition of the new characters like Kareem? I like Kareem as a character, although I personally would have liked a little bit less focus on him. Yeah. Even though, you know, he's supposedly such an important character and you don't know why until the very end. Yeah. But I, I kind of like the de- detective aspects of it and the, the, the trying to find Michelle, a.k.a. Buck. Um Yeah. So that was intriguing. I, I did feel, feel like it didn't need to take up as much time. I would have liked to focus on the original group a little bit more. Yeah, the original group got a little a little bit too... Um, didn't have enough focus. Yeah, not as much screen season, time. Not as much screen time. But the screen time they had was good. The bonding between them. Yeah, and that was that was actually some of my favorite portions of the season because... You know, that's those are the original characters that you were in. You were in that on that journey with them in the first season, and now you're on this journey, both uh, character development wise and physically, as they try to journey and try to figure out what to do. And what's interesting is that their whole story, their whole group, they have to base everything they're doing on faith. Yeah. Because they don't really know for sure what happened. And that's where French comes in and he's this like the skeptic. And now it's interesting with Steve's development. Now he's yeah. like the full on. He knows that this is right. That he knows he has 100% faith. Well, I think the interesting part of the story is their group. And they're the ones who needed the story. They needed Prairie's story. And they needed to have that like faith and that camaraderie. It's something to believe in. Because they didn't, they were all like troubled kids and didn't have that before. So I think they're like the heart of the story. Um. So yeah. Yeah. Um. And it's interesting how they converge in the end. Um. Because. And I like how they actually end up playing a part because the whole time you're like, okay, how is this going to tie into anything? Yeah. They're trying to transport this me- mirror and they have a whole side plot of going to the freaking Goodwill. To get the mirror. <laughs> and and then it breaks. Couldn't have called that. That was, it's a mirror. Yeah. And it's a special mirror that they're trying to keep safe. It's going to break. <laughs> yeah. My favorite portions of the season were definitely like... Um, the house, like them figuring out the house. I liked how trippy that house was. Yeah. The whole time I couldn't figure out what the house had to do with anything until the very end. You kind of come to understand that the house is kind of like a portal. And then I liked how they explained like when you're how like they're these characters are connected throughout all their dimensions, basically. So, like, it doesn't really matter what dimension they jump to. They're, like, going to be connected. Yeah, in some way, shape, or form. Or at least, like, this cluster of dimensions. Because I forget who who mentioned it. There was one character who mentions if you jump outside this cluster of dimensions, it's very dangerous because you could jump into, like, I don't know, a dead dead body or comatose body or something like that. But um, that's very interesting. And that kind of leads into... The fact that all of the characters that were in Hap's basement are now still his prisoners in the mental institution. And right. I guess that kind of makes sense in a way. Uh, but what do you think about that? I like that because, I mean, you got to think they're not going to be completely different people. Like you, you would think that if you jump dimensions to yourself in another dimension, you're going to keep a lot of your characteristics and a lot of things about you are going to be the same. So his interests might be the same. The fact that he's like a scientist might be the same. So I think 
I think that that's fine. It, the part that confuses me is like, how did they all so happen to jump in the exact same dimension? Like, I would assume they would all just when they jump to go to different dimensions randomly. And then how is it that they all like just so happen to be sitting in a circle when they jumped and then when they awoke they just so happened to be sitting in a circle together just yeah. them that was a little like I feel like it would have made more sense if like maybe they were all in that mental institute but they woke up in different places in the mental institute I don't know the fact that they were all sitting in a circle was weird yeah it was kind of weird it was all rather hap in stance yeah <laughs> but uh yeah it was it was kind of weird but I think it added a lot of drama and tension especially to that scene where they were flashing back and he was going and he like gave them that poison yeah. when they were in the field and then they did the movements and stuff I thought that was freaking awesome man that um, was really cool, but th- again, they could have all just woken up in the second dimension and not have been sitting in a circle. Yeah, I mean... Because that was weird. It was weird and doesn't make, like, 100% sense, but, I mean, it's not too far-fetched for me, personally, because I'll take the tension-filled drama of that scene over them just, like, waking up in separate areas i guess or what they could have done is like they do wake up in separate areas but then uh oh, what's his name the the drug addict guy scott scott he realizes what's happening and then he sees hap from like across the room or something like yeah. that and then he attacks him instead of yeah. just them being in that group and only them well i thought it, the whole time i i thought it was interesting what they did with homer's character i was like i bet homer didn't jump or homer jumped to a different dimension and this is a completely different homer oh, i'm so glad that they did that because i think it, that plot line would have been somewhat stale if all of them just yeah w- realized who they are and stuff like that homer added like uh, yet an- if this season didn't have enough layers to it Homer was like yet another layer to that plot line. Well, I love that was one of my favorite plot points at the end. How LOD explains that you have to like accept both of your. Both of your personalities, the other one is still in there. The other person is still in Mm -hmm. you and you have to like I can't remember how she words it, but you have to like let assimilate each yeah they have to assimilate both of them have to exist within you you and right now you just have one kind of person suppressing the other and so homer just suppressed his dimension one person whereas everybody else suppressed their second dimension person so that's why he couldn't remember yeah until the very end when When brought it out of him both of his and he remembered so i thought i loved that and i loved how like when prairie finally joined both of her personalities and brought both of them out she was able to to yeah um that was a really powerful scene there with homer finally because there was all that build up and you're like ah was he was he stuck back there did he jump into somebody else's or d- a different dimension and that actually makes me think about so is are the dimensions linear or can you just d- jump to any dimension that you want well, so Hap kind of answers that with the f- with the plant things coming out of their ears. And the whole time you're watching, you're like, okay, you're taking this too weird. Like, why are there plants coming out of their ears <laughs> when they... I don't know if they're actually dead or I think they're just unconscious. Or like in a comatose state, at least. Cause I mean, we know that they're Rachel... They're physically alive, at We least. know that Rachel's dead because she goes to the mirror. And he, like, we watch him basically kill her. Well, yeah, he because she die dies. Yeah. Whereas I don't know, he puts him in that like liquid pool. Yeah. Maybe that's like a, some sort of like a pool of mercury or something like that. I don't know if it's mercury. I think but it's just what? water. I think it's just he's letting the plants grow and he has them floating in the water, and the plants from their ears are growing, and he said that they have all the dimensions in their brain, like yeah. everybody does, and so. He takes those, and I can't remember what makes those grow. Is it when they go in the house? They get that in their ear? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, because cause if that were the case, you would think that anybody's plants would just grow out of their ears when they're laying in water. 
but no, obviously, no, it's some. I think it was. I think it was once you went in the house, you saw something or you had something that brought that out of your brain. And NDE. Yeah, or an NDE or something. Well, I think it was going to the house because all the younger boys were in there. Jesse and Steve from the other dimension. Yeah, and supposedly all the, those people that were in that pool in Hap's laboratory. Yeah. Were kids that went and played the app and the game, the and that's how they're all connected in the second dimension. Yes, which we didn't know prior how all those boys were connected. And Betty is not in the pool, and that's why they say to Betty, "Yes, it's safe for you to travel." Yeah, BBA, BBA, only BBA or something. Only like that. BBA can go. That's what Rachel says. Yeah. Only safe because Rachel's the one who peeked into that room and saw what Hap was doing. And so she knew, like, only Betty is the only one that wasn't in that pool. Because if anybody else would have jumped to that dimension, then they would have been just in a comatose in the pool. Yeah. So you would have just jumped to a dimension and been brain dead, basically. (laughs) Or actually dead. Yeah. Jeez. This, like, I mean, season one was a lot of mystery buildup with not a lot of answers, Season two was a lot of mystery buildup with a lot of like big revelation answers. Yeah. Well, the, my question is at the end, at the very, very end, they all jump into a third dimension, which is like our current reality. Yeah. Or it's supposed to be, I think. Supposedly. And, and Steve is there and you can tell he's jumped. So yes. did Steve skip the second dimension then? Because if he yes. would have went straight to the... If he would have done the movements, you think he would have gone to the second dimension. Into the, his comatose into body. Into his comatose body. And then he couldn't With have the traveled. growing out of his head. Yeah. So, like, how did he get to the third dimension randomly if it is linear? And if it's not linear, how did he end up in the same dimension as everybody else? Yeah. Was he able to choose? And how did he find Hap and, uh, I almost said Brit. Well, I guess it is Britt Marling now. Yeah, because that's her name in that dimension. <laughs> Isaac. Uh, Jason Isaac. Jason Isaac. But it's funny how he eats the flower. And so then he's able to see like the dimensions. And he's yeah. in love with Prairie. And he's like, oh, well, if I go the, to this dimension where everything is a movie that we've done and I actually didn't do these terrible things. It was all just my character. Then she will actually love me. And he yeah. even makes a comment like we're going to go to a dimension where everything I've done so far like won't matter to you anymore. And you're thinking, well, how can that possibly be? Then you, then you jump to the dimension where it's all just for a TV show. And so you're like, Oh, that was smart. But I also really felt like that ending was, I, I know I said earlier, I like the ending. I liked the, the ending with the plants and like how you can travel using the plants and how everybody was connected. Like the roots basically represent different, uh, roots of dimensions yeah and how and how we find out how the boys are connected to everything and how you can eat the flower and choose your dimension but i hated that they jumped to our actual current reality so you didn't like the end end you you didn't like that aspect of the ending that is our current reality it's bringing things too real yeah too well it wasn't it's just kind of i felt like it was actually kind of a cop-out like are kind of cliche for a sci-fi show that's so innovative. Like I would have liked to see them actually jump to just like a different dimension, not our current reality. And then being not their actors, but maybe just another character who are actors that were playing. Yeah. I don't know. That would have been like an extra interesting Eh, way. I don't know if I would have liked that either. Really? Because that doesn't go with their characters. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I haven't really decided on... I mean, I think it's fine. I don't think it's a big deal, really. I think it's interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to what they can do with it. Hopefully, they'll make the season three. Look forward to seeing that in three years. Yeah, right? (laughs) Well, I heard that they're supposedly doing five seasons. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so they they have enough story for five seasons. Dang. So... Well, it's a, it's a good show. Uh, we really like it. We think it's we like how like unique and interesting it is. What did you think of the whole plot with Pierre Ruskin? So Pierre Ruskin is supposedly a Prairie's like boyfriend in this dimension, although we never really see them together at all. But or Nina, I should say Nina. Nina Nina's yeah. Nina's boyfriend, and he is the one who 
basically is behind the app that they play. App development and the sleep and study. The app, the app is meant to lure people to the house so that he can figure out how to the puzzle of the house. So it's like a crowdsourcing way for him to discover. Yeah, because the house is like a, a portal of some sort. And that kind of leads into the introduction of other travelers. Yeah. Which we meet at least two others. Yeah. Which one of them was from last season, the FBI agent, which he wasn't in this season very much. But um, I thought that whole plot line was rather interesting. Yeah. And makes sense because... I mean, would Hap really, if for something like this, would Hap really be the only one in the whole world in all of the dimensions to be studying this? Yeah. Well, and you got to think maybe some dimensions are more technologically advanced than others. Yeah. Like dimension two. Yeah. So you could think, well, and I think, okay, so Elodie's character is interesting because she's a traveler. She's that French lady, right? Yeah. I think she's, I don't, I think she's she's French. French. Yeah. And so, and he, Hap seems to have an attraction to her and she uses the boxes to, or she uses the like robots to, yeah, the, to do the movements, to do the movements. So it's just kind of weird, but I, I felt like that was kind of dumb because it, to me, it, it feels like it kind of takes away some of the spiritual aspects of it. Yeah. Cause like they're robots. They don't have, they're just like metal. Yeah. Like how are they emanating any kind of energy to do anything? They're just displacing the air, <laughs> basically. Yeah, I can see that. But at the same time, you got to think, okay, in her world, traveling is becoming a little bit more of a normal thing. And so they're making newer ways to do it. But she travels to another dimension in front of Hap. And then her body just collapses to the ground. And then she travels back. We think we should travel back because later we see her talking to Prairie. Yeah. In that in that um, dimension two. So in the, in the Russian club. Yeah. So it's like, okay, did she travel back? How did she get back to her body? So did so maybe you don't die when you travel, which makes me think because Prairie gets shot the same time she travels. Yeah. Was that just a coincidence? And then Hap. Mm put that like deadly serum in everybody when they all traveled. So they're dead and Prairie's dead. But do you have to die? Because when you travel, because it seems like Elodie didn't die. And then it seems like Michelle is also in a comatose state. So she's, we think she traveled, right? She traveled into the, current reality through the house because she the like house. Sol- solved the app or s- she solved, she the, solved app. the house and then i think she went through the portal and so her it, through the window through the window because yeah, he had that video yeah and so her. now she's buck or the actor who plays buck yes and but she's also herself from that other dimension too so when she sees kareem in the window she like goes back like almost tries to go back i think like realizing that it's all real. She's not just an actress or he or she. I guess I should say he. Yeah. He is not just an act. Well, yeah. He's just not an actor. Yeah. So, well, it's Michelle in Dimension 2. Yeah, it's Michelle so it's she in Dimension 2, She in guess. Dimension 2 and then a he in Dimension then, 3. Yes. In Dimension um, 1 and 3. Is Buck. Buck. Yeah. Well, but then in Dimension 3, Buck is actually the actor who plays Buck. So it like gets really complicated. Still a he. Yeah, still a he. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so Michelle seems to be in a comatose state and then Elodie seems to be in a comatose. So maybe you don't die when you travel necessarily. I don't know. They didn't quite answer that. Well, it depends on how you travel. Like, cause Elodie does say there's multiple ways of traveling. So she obviously does the robot movements to travel, uh, Prairie and the Haps prisoners die. To travel but I don't think they had to die. They didn't have to die. Hap put the serum in them to force them to travel. Well, they just ended up dying afterwards. Well, yeah. Like, otherwise, he was like, basically, if you don't travel, you'll die. So you have to travel or die. And then Prairie yeah. just got shot coincidentally. So she's the only one who really died coincidentally. So yeah. if, she, if they did the movements... She probably would have traveled yeah, like they without just, dying and just fell yeah. down to a coma or something. Yeah, that, like Elodie did, I think. Yeah. And so, um, 
that's another question that's like, do you die when you travel or what happens to your body when you travel to a new body? Because it seems like when you go to a new body, you have to like converge your two identities instead of like yeah, replacing your identity. That's interesting too. So when, so it, when it's Nina and Prairie, which one travels or do they both travel to the new body? Yeah, there. I would think they would both because once you assimilate your two identities, you can't like separate them. I would think. Yeah. Because then, yeah, I, I feel like you couldn't separate them. Or, or perhaps, I, I don't remember it entirely, but perhaps um, when Prairie brought Nina to the surface, they're basically just opening themselves up to each other and sharing each other's Hmm. memories but still they're still two distinct people in one like, body yeah spirits or or uh consciousnesses in the one body so yeah. when prairie traveled to the dimension three it was actually prairie and nina's still there oh actually because Ni- nina prairie was floating way up there and then yeah. when she traveled she just fell like she did in dimension three so she might be dead yeah, we don't know. In Dimension 2 now. Well, and since Hap never assimilated his two personalities, when he traveled, did he completely lose his personality from Dimension 2? Or maybe his body didn't collapse at all from Dimension 2 because his um, second personality was never... Like snapped back into... Yeah, it was... I don't know. Like, it's where, like where the hell am I now? Yeah. <laughs> Why is there this... And he sh- just shot Homer. He's like, did I just shoot this dude? <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. And then... Yeah. And also, they were doing the movements. So, do you think Homer traveled or do you think Homer's dead? I think Homer... Both. I think he traveled into the third dimension... But then so you I think, think his consciousness is still alive, the, but his yeah. body in I think his two is body dead. in dimension two is dead. Dang, man. So Homer's two bodies have died now. Yeah. What did you think of? So I know one controversial part that I didn't really care for either was the octopus and the talking or whispering tree. That which, stuff. Um, yeah, that stuff. I felt like it would have been fine if there was more to me. I needed a little bit more lead up to that kind of fantastical of a thing. Just yeah. they're just I mean, obviously she's getting ready for some show. She's like the headliner of a she's a popular at that club for some reason and you see the suction cup markings on her wrists yeah. or for her forearms and you're wondering what they are and then all of a sudden boom, giant squid. <laughs> And, and then you're like, what the hell is this? And it's a giant CG squid and it's like all like erotically touching her. <laughs> and, and then it just starts talking. <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah. I am Azo, Azotha, Azeroth or Can't remember Azrael, uh, some with an A. And I get that like Old she's night. an angel. And so in the, and the octopus is supposed to represent like the angel of death. And I think the tree is probably supposed to represent some sort of spirit. Spirit. Yeah, like I said, there's a lot of symbolic representation kind of stuff, and you can yeah. tell. But we, we just I don't just, know. It, I felt like it took it a little too fantastical, and I feel like they should just leave, kind of leave us wondering if she's an angel or not. And I felt like that was a little too much, a little too weird, I think. I don't know if that really amounted to anything. I- well, so like, what, was it really worth putting in the show at all? I almost feel like the only reason the octopus and the talking tree were in the show is to set up for the next season. Like they clearly have a plan. They clearly have like somewhere they're going with this fantastical piece. Mm-hmm. And like um, old Knight showed her like on a plane. And I'm pretty sure it's her, although we don't see her face. She sees herself sitting on a plane with the short hair, which makes me think it's the current. He's like giving her a glimpse of the third reality or the third dimension that they're in now. Um, But, you know, so she gets a glimpse of that. But I'm and I think so. I think all that stuff is like things that they wanted to leave open for the next season. Leave us wondering about. But I don't know. There wasn't enough 
build up to it. It, yeah. it felt too sudden, I guess, with that kind of thing. And and they explain that she has the ability to, you know, speak with nature and whatnot. And uh, what is what does Old Knight say about how he talks to his friends in the ocean and about I don't like how how long has he been in that tank? Do they does he come up and say, "Hey, Russian guys, I'm ready for my show now." in the ocean and then they take him there or is he because he talks about talking to his fish friends or yeah. whatever <laughs> i don't think anyone else can really communicate with him other than nina and prairie well yeah but old knight mentions that he's talking to his ocean friends like yeah. how long ago was that yeah i yeah. don't know they that whole part i think is meant to be like this big like mystery to us obviously uh you know, put in the comments what you think if you have theories or if you actually know what the hell's going on with that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was super weird. Is I mean, it's still interesting to me. The other weird thing is Homer's little dream into the past. It looks like. Oh my god. Where he's like looking <laughs> at all of these different backs. It's like the midi medieval ages. Yeah. He's got this big beard i think yeah and then he just like starts licking this random oh yeah. he's like trying to find a way i think or is he building i read that uh, i don't if he's building a person or what i don't know that is weird man those parts were weird talk about shoving a lot of symbolic <laughs> stuff into this man <laughs> um but yeah, uh, speaking of, I, th I think Homer was one of the more interesting characters in this because he had that extra dynamic of being like under the consciousness of the original person that was there. Yeah. And then his whole thing of finally coming out of it and uh, what's her face being the one to finally help him come out of that. And she just happened to be right in the right place at the right time to bring him back to the surface um, uh, to help him get through the elevator door. Yeah. You know, I forgot her name. Nina? No, the, the black hair. Oh. Um, Renata. Yeah, because Hap was like, oh, it was all a dream. It's all fake. And he like convinced her of that. But then after that, you know, she finally came to the realization that, oh, no, it wasn't a dream, and, you know. Yeah. Lots of good stuff. But um, I think definitely my favorite stuff was the original character stuff. I think that's, like you said, that's where the heart of, of it was. And, like, when Jesse died, that was, like, super sad. Yeah. Because that was, like, his episode, and that's, like, really tackling, like, depression and stuff, and it's not always super obvious like yeah you know um and he just wanted like some relief from the pain and so he just took too many pain patches and yeah and died and i thought that was interesting how bba was dreaming that and it's almost yeah. like his spirit visited her because he realized yeah what he had like his spirit realized what he did and then she just oh man like the acting the performances and that whole part was like phenomenal man i love betty's character she's so phenomenal and i rant and rave about her in our season one review and i didn't get enough of her in season two um, yeah i like steve's character um but i really love hap i think he's just an excellent villain with so many layers he's an extremely strong villain and he's just so like <sighs> There's points where you're like, is he going to turn good? Like, there's points where you think he's going to like... And, like, even there's parts where, like, he, like, lets Scott go. Well, kind of. He says, okay, like, in this dimension, I'm happy with what I'm doing. Like, you can be free now. And then... I kind of think that was 100% a trick. Yeah. I don't know. Because there's... he wanted the plant. He wanted to get him yeah. for the plant. Which is weird because in that scene, he's like having him crawl through this tunnel and then he just kind of collapses. Yeah. And then the right. next time we see him, he's extracting the plant. How did Hap get but to him still, and get him back there? There's always like, it, 
Hap does so many evil things, and I'm always thinking still that he's going to turn good. I don't know why, because he's just so, like, such a layered villain. It's probably his drive to discover. Yeah. And his drive to discover is so strong that he's willing to sacrifice anyone to find the answers that he's looking for. And it's obvious that he doesn't believe in like spiritual kind of stuff. Right. Cause and he talks about consciousnesses and science and yada, yada. And on the other side of the corn is Prairie. Here's what makes Hap so interesting is I wonder if in his second dimension, if he's a good guy prior to his evil self, traveling there so in dimension two prior to his his original and dimension one traveling there was he a good guy yeah and then same in dimension three i mean obviously brit marries him in the current reality because they're husband and wife so you're like okay so maybe he's a good guy in all of his other dimensions except for that one and then it makes you think do they all have an evil Counterpart. Sell an evil counterpart in some other dimension. From the looks of Steve, he's got like this leather coat and like his haircut. He kind of yeah. looks a little punkish. Well, <laughs> sort of. that was kind of how he was. Well, yeah, maybe. But I mean, well, that's yeah, that's how he was before. But he, he's obviously grown a lot as a character. But I just kind of it almost makes Hap less evil because you're like, oh, there's all these different dimensions. And you know, Hap doesn't seem like he was too evil in this third dimension. So maybe they all have a dimension where they're evil. Yeah, I mean, he's just an actor. Yeah, or, maybe you know, they all have scientist. dimensions where they're really good people and they all have dimensions where they're really evil. And we're only seeing the one dimension where Hap's evil. So almost, I don't know. It's crazy because it asks, it opens up so many questions. Yeah. It makes you so, see the characters in such a different way. And the door is wide open. They can go so many different directions from here. Yeah. Um, with how it's written. Speaking of the door, thank you for answering the question about oh, yeah. <laughs> why the doors had to be open. I don't know how Prairie knew that when she said She's it. She's the OA. But she knew the doors needed to stay open. So their spirits can come in and possess mirrors. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, the, um, uh, that also brings up the other question of, like, if we see how many people does it take to travel? We still don't know because all the kids did the movements, but the only person who traveled was Brit or not or not Brit was Prairie. Prairie. So when they all did the movements in the cafeteria in season one, the only person to travel was Prairie. But later on, when um they all do the movements in the field. All of the, you know, all of them traveled. They all traveled with huh, Hap. They yeah. all traveled. So how do you make it so just one person travels versus the entire group traveling? Yeah. So that also needs to be answered. Yeah. So there's a lot of questions still unanswered, and I really like that. And I love how they left it off at a cliffhanger with questions that still need to be answered. Um. And, you know, going back to the house, I thought that was very interesting. And they actually had that layer of, oh, is it actually like that? Is the house actually a gateway or a spiritual thing? Or is it the mercury that's causing delusions yeah. and hallucinations in people? But then they kind of answered that at, at yeah. the end with Buck kind of looking at the house and remember almost like almost like he remembered like. Going in like that yeah, dimension. Yeah, he was he was getting like Michelle's memories or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Or you don't know if he, if he is Michelle in that in Buck's body. You don't know. We don't know. So yeah, it's, a, it's somewhat ambiguous at least. And um, I would have liked. I mean, I keep saying it, but I would have liked more of that original group with yeah French, and I would have liked to see a little bit more of more development for for Buck and. And all them. My biggest problem with the ending of the season is if you're going to make it the current reality where they're just actors in a TV show, then it's very coincidental then that all of the entire show that they're acting in just so happens to be the truth. 
And yeah. you just like got it. Your script got it spot on because if you are traveling into this dimension where everything you've just experienced is all a show, then you just so happen to like write the show as the truth <laughs> and have the truth. And so... Yeah, that's just kind of crazy. It's, like, too far-fetched. I wonder if they'll clarify that, too. And I wonder if they'll actually delve into the actual show that they're filming in Dimension 3 and see if it has any differences or if yeah. it's, like, exact. You know? It's exactly the same. They somehow subconsciously know what all their other dimensions, like, have shown them, and they're making a show about it. And then they'll have Kareem, <laughs> like, trying to investigate this kid's disappearance and, yeah and oh speaking of kareem he kept having that uh vision of himself falling off a cliff so like i'm thinking that he was or um a, a, somebody from that dimension that actually fell off that cliff traveled to his body somehow and they are underneath his consciousness yeah and he's like kind of getting their memories a little bit so that's like another question well, that could be answered. Well, that's the same thing with like the dream that Homer had. With about he, the fish, where he no, eats the fish. No, about the backs. Oh, oh like yeah. maybe he's already traveled to that body and he's having memories from previous dimensions or something. Man, you know, so much freaking stuff, man. So much stuff in only eight episodes. Yeah. Well, overall, it's like lucky it wasn't a complete, you know, cluster F because <laughs> like with all the stuff that they did in this, it actually turned out pretty good. I yeah, think. I don't mind it with all the characters and all the stuff they threw in. Yeah. Um, overall, I would give the, sh the show a really high score. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to season three. Um, I feel like, though, the seasons are just going to get more fantastical and more fantastical. Yeah, I As hope the they seasons go on. Uh, I hope they just don't go off into outer space too much, or at least if they do, at least build up to it properly. Um, yeah. Also, I hope we see more of the FBI agent because he came in for like ten minutes. Yeah. He's like, ah, I'm I'm a pretty big actor now, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was in Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal, <laughs> but um, but yeah, he we answer his question too, and the books, the yeah. books are answered. I mean, they pr pretty much look at the camera and tell the audience that the... Yeah. Oh, the, we bought those on Amazon. I mean, <laughs> I feel like we already figured out the books, so I didn't feel like they needed to answer pretty that. Mu but. Pretty much, yeah. Um, but I hope we see more of him and get more answers for how the other travelers do their stuff and all yeah. that. So, I mean, it kind of seems like that's where this is headed. And the cliffhanger yeah. that they left off at the end of the season, boom. Steve just catches up to the ambulance... Yep. And just hops right in somehow. <laughs> um, which is interesting because at the end of the last season, he was running after Prairie's ambulance. Yeah. And this time he catches up to it. Yep. That's interesting. So, um, yeah, I think that's a, that about wraps it up. Yeah. So overall, fine. Like overall, I would give it a really high score. Yeah. Very enjoyable. I think I did like uh, season one a little bit more just because of how it was structure just my yeah. personal taste but um yeah me too still just really slightly. good still really interesting and very interesting concepts and yeah um really interesting imagery too just put that out there but yeah if uh, y'all have anything to add put it down in the comments and uh thanks a lot for listening and take it easy <laughs>